if it's true, does it change how I live my life? This is something that is not an easy answer because of the magnitude of what we're talking about here. How it will change your life, first of all, when you understand it, is dramatic, to say the least. I'm Justin Darby. I've known Rob Mason for quite a while now. Me and him are working on the naval base out at Garden Island together for a while, and we're doing caches as well after work. We are driving down Tonkin Highway about 7.30 at night, going to a cash job to finish it off. And then Rob spotted three UFOs out to the right, just near Perth International Airport. Mace, I was like, Darby, we need to film this, we need to film this. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll film it, I'll film it. But we can't stay here too long because I need to get to this job. My missus is cracking the sads, you know, they were out so late. She was handing me to get home, get home, bloody kids. She couldn't really believe it at first. She just thought I was out gallivanting around at the strippers or some shit. But once we showed her the footage, she was like, holy shit, you weren't telling lies. And, and I'm pulling over, I'm like, whoa, get fucked. And so started to drive, I'm sitting there filming, trying to film over the top of him on a bloody iPhone, what was it, iPhone 4 or 5 or something like that. And it was just like, oh, my so... This is out of this world, man. Fuck work. We need to follow these things. And Mesa was all on board with that. He started following. I was like, go to my brother's house, which is towards Elton Golf Course. Didn't end up going to see him. So we got there, which is about 15 kilometres away from the airport. As Rob's pulled into the um, driveway for Elton Golf Course, he was a bit excited. Didn't see an island in front of him. Hit it. Ran over it bit of a car crash then we've got out the car Rob's ran off I've just seen these orange light just shoots directly straight up in the sky and Rob's come back all energized and then went to the bottle shop because we thought we needed to celebrate and seen all these people in the car park we were asking them they were like whoa what the hell no we didn't see nothing but that sounds awesome it was crazy Something you know like, couldn't believe it it was like mind-blowing shit. It felt like we were in a dream, but you know it wasn't a dream. And it just crashed the car. Yeah, it was good. I've always sort of believed that there's something else out there. That was crazy. Kimbo was very unfortunate that he missed out that night. Yeah. But he got to watch the footage. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, we all can't be there. Yeah. Maybe that's why they chose us. Them, they chose us. Yeah. We didn't choose them. Could not sleep afterwards. It was just awesome. Couldn't stop talking about it. Everyone wanted to watch the footage. Everyone wanted to talk to us. It was awesome. Oh, everyone was just like, "What the hell?" Yeah. Wish I was there. Why, why couldn't I see it? I'm sorry. You have to be the chosen ones. Because why else would they follow us down Lake Road or Tonkin Highway? after the airport, like, that's crazy. Then all the way to Elton Golf Course, which is probably 15, 20 kilometers away from the airport. They had a good look at us and took off. Like, can you see that one all the way the back there? Dude, they can land now, the fucking things are out of the way. Are you serious? It's going on with these fucking lights. I'm Donna, and I took the photos of Rob at the quarry in 2012. Mesa had a lovely experience taken. This is the first known series of photographs that I know, and I've been researching UFO ufology for um, oh, a good number of years now, uh, that we have, where we have the person zooming off and then zooming back, like being abducted and coming back. It's in transition. First known photographs that I know ever, okay? So that's pretty significant. 
just that alone for history on earth. We are uh, now having a very fascinating discussion with Robert Mason about one of his many experiences where he was uh, actually, uh, I don't want to use the term abducted, but he had an experience where he was he was taken, disappeared for a while, and came back, and all of this is on photographic evidence. I successfully predicted the first crop circle and the last crop circle for the 2017 crop circle season, which was obviously confirmed by the UFOs and their crop circles. In 2013, is that meteor that explodes over Russia? The eyes of the world today stunned by this image. This was debris from a meteor racing toward Earth, streaking across the sky. Um, the meteor that, that blew up over Russia? It's the biggest meteor in more than a century to hit the planet. This one crashed in Russia. A thousand people were injured from shards of flying glass and debris. Tonight here, we have learned there was no warning. More on that from NASA in just a moment. Uh, that would have been a little bit dangerous. All right, All right. so um, when that went down, okay, that would if it would have landed intact, okay, we would have been a little bit messed up here on Earth. Do you, do you agree with James that a lot of the UFO experiences people have are, are somewhat spiritual? There's a spiritual side to it? Oh, for sure. Um, and do you think that maybe that in 2013 that whatever happened was set up by the UFOs to, to get the attention and the, and the pe uh, attention of people? Because think about it. Why would they wait until the until the meteor was almost hit the hit the planet, hit the earth, you know, hit the ground, hit, um, why did it wait to the last moment? Why didn't they just blow it up out, out in space? Uh, if they were going to do, do what they did, why, why wouldn't they just have taken it out before it even got here? So they've obviously, they've obviously used it or they've obviously created it or used it to, to get people's attention, to wake them up. It just so happens this one night my mum was with like I said with from the Siri, my name's Siri and, and Izzy and they found themselves they were lost. They were like they were driving along and then they, they weren't sure where they were. There was a house. You could see in a field this house sitting in the middle of a field which was glowing. But not only that, above this house was a massive city in the sky. It was a huge city in the sky. They had time to stop the car. The three of them got out the car. They were all looking at it. And they explained how there was a big, this city had big gates and big roads and pathways. They were all, and they were looking at it for a number of minutes. And then my mum had the, um, the idea, oh, I'll get my phone and I'll, and I'll try and take a picture of this thing. And then she's, she's, got, she's gone and got the phone out of the car and she's gone out to take a photo of it. And, and it's just like a, big, like a big wave. It's just gone over it and just, whoosh, it's just disappeared. I don't know when I got the camera out, my phone out. All of a sudden, all the clothes just went like that, straight over it, up in the right, right to the left. Oh, and yeah, it was like that, which was still looking right at that left bit. Yeah. Before, like, there was nothing there. Yeah. It's cool. Kingdom or something up there. Yeah, it is. And you reckon there was paths and hills and stuff as well? Yeah, and like long driveways. We were the only ones that could see it even, like it was there just for us to see. Yeah. Oh no, so, it was like a kingdom, like you could see it, like it was like, almost like, serious, like the rounded sort of, and, I could, and it was like, almost like you could touch it. And then like, it was just there in the sky, when we stopped going. It was a house in the sky sort of thing, yeah. No, no, the house we, yeah. that we looked at, but then like, we looked up, okay, and I was like, check out, check out, check out the house. And she was like, you see what I see? And I said, I think I am, do we got out, we tried to take a photo, it just closed up on itself. Right. Is it something that forever you'll never forget it? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, after my UFO experiences, I, to, I wanted to go to Egypt, but I couldn't go there because um, it was like basically when I landed in Europe, like the ISIS were all over the telly cutting people, hurting people, and it was too dangerous, and, and I couldn't really get a ticket to Egypt and go there and explore the pyramids and all the stuff. But something was compelling me to go there. Like, it felt as though I, was, I had to go there to get some answers. So yeah. I was stuck basically just in Europe. But I've seen enough and um, got enough answers, which I needed just from my time in Europe, to, to it answer a lot of my questions. And I, so I went to Prague and all these different cities with these old cathedrals and, and churches and, and uh, castles. 
and, and cathedrals and stuff like that. And there's all like gargoyles and statues of, of like, I'm not sure who they were, but there were men standing up and each one of them would be like standing with a book in his hand or maybe a staff, like a walking staff or maybe a, ch a child. And then there'd be all children or people like around his feet. like look, And they'd all be looking up to the sky and the man would stand with a book and his other hand would be pointing up to the sky and they're looking up. So it was clear as day. They were trying to show they were trying to show us that there's something up there that that watches over us. So like, let's just say people wouldn't refer to them as angels or UFOs or aliens or whatever they are. They've, they've been here for the whole time. Well, they're watching over us the whole time and they have, a, I suppose they have a plan. Nothing is nothing and we're all something and there's a big, there's a big plan going on and there's a whole lot more going on in this world and this life that we know about, James. There is, there is another level. There is, we're all like, we're here to, to uh, as a test to get to that, to get to that next, that, 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 that perfect place. That's what I said to her, I don't tell lies. That is like a once in a lifetime type of thing, isn't it? Mm. No, it's almost like we're winning the lotto, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. we got more chance of being hit by a car. But that's the problem with the people these days, they walk around with their eyes closed.